Hello everybody and welcome back to Simon's Order Academy. Today we're going to be talking about the remaining five strongholds of order that I didn't cover in the previous video. First off, shout out to the patrons. These guys keep me making videos, uh, keep me motivated. You wouldn't be getting these videos if not for these guys. So if you speak to these guys on the internet or uh, in person, just say thanks to them for basically making these videos happen. All right, so five cities, one of them from the Battle Tome, for the other four from the Broken Realms books. So we obviously got a bit of a, you know, influx of extra cities uh, when Broken Realms came around, which is only going to be a good thing for us. So starting with Tempesai, the last city in the book, um, it's always been, it was always a strong city in second edition, and I don't think that's changed much in third. Essentially, because of the Hawkeye command trait, um, you get plus one to wound on shooting, and shooting is better. Uh, I would argue in third edition, but on top of that, you can you also still get that buff when it's the uh, charge phase. So your unleash hell will be a plus one to wound. So really strong. Uh, Mist Haven didn't see much play in second edition just because it didn't really work. Um, it since has been changed, and I think it's I think it's worth a look in now. Um, it's it, with Drakespawn being 125 compared to everything else going up and Drakespawn coming down uh, I think that makes it viable with a Dreadlord on Black Dragon as your general and deep striking them and charging them as a legitimate tactic because all that defense from unit leaders can get them to a 2 plus so I think that's strong um, Hark you're on I don't really need to say much it's Marathi you take Marathi in this edition and you're already halfway to a victory. So Harkuron is still very strong and so therefore so is the city. There's an issue with um, basically the wording, meaning that Marathi can't get um, any of the allegiance ability spells into because she's a, you know, it says no unique models and they didn't make that a change to the Harkuron um, spell law. But I've submitted a thing to GW to hopefully get that clarified. And Settler's Gain, so Lumineth are really good in 3rd edition, you know, 30 Sentinels is super strong, uh, 60 Sentinels is also pretty strong, so I don't, I don't know how you make that list, I think it's 2 by 30 Sentinels, 1 by one by 10 Wardens, 3 units of Flagellants, 3 units of Aether Wings, and then Characters to Taste, probably? Uh, I don't think I don't think that's the strongest build. That's a meme build, but I still think that you know one unit of thirty sentinels with a unit of wardens and um, probably a high warden. Is he a high warden? The dude on horse um, to back them up. Well, I guess he's not on a horse. Is he's on like an alpaca or something? Um, yeah, that's uh, there's a list that I'm going to be running um, once I get my Lumineth models, which have been being painted for God knows how long now. It feels like about twelve months. Um, but yeah, I'll hopefully get them on the channel once they're finished. And then finally, Excelsis. So Excelsis, I still am not a huge fan of. The plus one to hit buff is interesting, especially in you know the ch it, it, in every phase. It's interesting. So I think that that's an option. And um, yeah, I, I still I'm still not con completely convinced with Excelsis. If they change the wording of the frost, uh, not the frost, out the flame spy phoenix. Um, to be run retreat and normal move he burns stuff then I'll be trying to run him in the city and I think that he'll be worth it alone with the with the um, command trait but we'll cover that when we actually get to the city itself all right so let's start with Tempesai so Tempesai again was always a good um, city mostly because of Hawkeye but also because of um, the battle trait rules, which give you plus one armor save, plus three inches to movement um, on the first turn, and you always get plus one to run. The So in third edition, when you've got armor stacking to the degree which we do, um, obviously plus one armor save on the first turn to every single unit in your army is really strong. Um, it's, you know, it, it just adds another one armor save to your armor stacking abilities, which with, you know, all our defense and uh, Mystic Shield just makes everything better um it's it's really good and like i've been running some vindictors in um vindictors in hammerhall and they would be really good in this because they'd go to a 12 armor save on the first turn and they get eight inches to run uh, eight inches base and then they'd run for an extra inch as well so you'd be going at a minimum 10 with your you know combat block of 15 vindictors with a lantern on them at a one plus armor save so it's essentially a, a two plus ignoring round one so really good um, it's 
you know, the the standing contracts is what allows you to bring in Caradron units. I'm not that big a fan of KO at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. That's kind of the next bit down. I used to really like making KO characters the general as you could um, put them in the boat with, uh, put them in a boat with a unit and, you know, that they, they would be the retinue and all the bus. So it's, it's, it's also a double hit because at the moment, as per the first FAQ, KO units don't get the Cities of Sigma keyword. So that means they wouldn't benefit from command abilities and they wouldn't benefit... Um, sorry, they, they do benefit from the command abilities because they they're on Tempest Eye only. But things like the Hurricanum um, only go on Cities of Sigma units now. And so that wouldn't be... You, you wouldn't be getting the plus one to hit from the Hurricanum. I still don't know if that's intentional. Again, I wrote in and asked for clarification on that um, particular rule because they also did it with the Sylvaneth in um, Living City. So I expect that it's going to be corrected. However, it might not be, and they might just say that they didn't want um, KO to be able to get Cities of Sigma buffs. So that may be how it, how it turns out. I do want to quickly mention um, the uh, Rapid Redeploy command ability. So use it in your shooting phase. Pick one friendly Tempestai unit and it uh, can shoot even if it ran in the same turn. So really strong, especially when you've got that unit of Vine Drakes that the first turn might not be in range. You soul screen bridge, let's say you fail your soul screen bridge and then you want to be able to shoot. You can run them. Uh, that, so first turn, they'll be going four inches plus three because of the um, the battle trait plus two because they're running. So they're, they're actually going a minimum of 10 inches to run and shoot. So really strong. Um, ability to be able to use with with those so you're getting you know like a, a 26 inch minimum threat range on iron drakes which is quite good they're obviously not shooting twice but i still think that that is super strong now the command trait wise hawkeye i think is still the the default choice i don't think you should ever uh, not have um hawkeye in your tempestide lists and uh, just because it's amazing with unleash hell especially if you got you know you're able to, to unleash hell with 60 iron drakes that are within range of a hurricane and within range of your hawkeye general just you're just going to ruin whatever comes anywhere near you so good the the iron dragon bridge combo i think is better because now the sorceress gets an extra plus one to cast uh, or the you know the Gur battle mage gets plus one to cast as well if you don't want to take a sorceress because um, uh, by doing that you you're getting plus one from the Gur battle mage plus one from the hurricanum and then plus one from casting an endless spell so there's a couple of ways to get plus three to cast with the um, soul screen bridge to cast the soul screen bridge so I think that's strong. The um, artifact wise I think you're still better taking the amulet of destiny and or the um, arcane tome. However, Patrician's Helm is still strong. Being able to mitigate Battle Shock is especially strong in this edition, where you know you've got spells that can say that you can't do, um, that you can't, that you you can't use Inspiring Presence, um, or that you can't use it on multiple units. So I still think that there's value in that. The Seer Stone Amulet is still okay because you know command command points are really really strong in this edition, and you still don't get enough of them in my um, in my experience. And so you always want um, as many of them as you can get. So that's always a strong second option. And then the third one is the Zephyrite Banner, which I don't think you'd ever be taking. Um, and I just want to say that uh, the all the spells from the law are great options. So the Law of Eagles, you have Aura of Glory, which is plus one attack to everything holy within 12 inches, really strong. The Strike of Eagles, which has range of 30 inches, and it does, on average, three mortal wounds. So you're rolling six dice, um, and you're on a four plus dual mortal wound. So on average, three mortal wounds, really strong. Really good option. Remember that most of your spells are going to be getting plus one or plus two to cast. These all cast on a seven. So they're really, you know, they're really interesting options. And then the third one is Celestial Visions, which again is an extra command point. So, you know, Tempest I think is in a really strong position. I'm not, I don't think you take KO units really in the city anymore. I don't think you have to. Previously it gave you a little bit of mobility, but the gun hall is actually going up, you know, 25 points, which is 20% is actually a really really big hit to the mobility you could probably still get away with one or two gun haulers i think you just take cities and stormcast units at this point so misthaven the first city that was in broken realms from rathi it wasn't really seen that much in second edition i think because the units that you wanted to take uh that, to basically make it work so your primarily your order serpentus units weren't that great in second edition so your drake spawn cavalry and your um dreadlord on Black Dragon and and chariots as well. I guess to some effect, I still don't rate them too much, but they're you know they're on the, they're on the list. They are one of the 
Order Serpentis units. So now that Drakespawn Cav have dropped in points when everything else has gone up and they're on a three up, which can be improved to a two up, I think that they're a much stronger option in third edition. And so that indirectly actually makes Mist Haven better um, and a, a more legitimate choice because your um, uh, Dreadlord on Black Dragon also has an aura command ability which he uses on himself and then auto spendus models wholly within 12 get to re-roll their uh, is a plus one wound plus one wound um, so he can do that on himself and at the same time they can do all our defense on themselves and aura lad attack and so you, you've got a little punchy unit that's 125 points with a three up or a two up armor save so really really strong um, I think, and the ability that you can, um, I'll just jump to the third point down, but being able to deep strike them in, um, nine inches away from, you know, the opponents and then move it for D six inches, um, with shadow Lord. So the minimum you're going to be moving is one. And then when you've got plus one, a charge on them from the musician, anyway, they're going to be a seven inch charge, which is pretty good. But on average, you should move three inches. And so they should be on a five inch charge, uh, which if you're taking out like, you know, little inconsequential units or chaff units or, you know, backline heroes. It's actually really strong. And so I'm I'm considering running a list like uh, with those models, with with that combo once I get the models for it. Um, the FAQ allowing an extra artifact, uh, sorry, an, an extra narcotic per artifact is really good because it means that you can take a Warlord Battalion and now you're getting two, um, uh, two narcotics as well as two artifacts and the two that I would be choosing pretty much every time if I if I have to uh, the Sinus Thalcum, I think uh, Which is the plus one to hit rolls because you can use that independently of all that attacks You can even give yourself plus one to, plus two to hit if they're you know um, uh, Lookouts uh, if you're shooting them or if they have minus one to hit from an ability um, on their on their war scroll and then the second one is Witch Mist, which is the um, ethereal save. Um, so ignore modifies to your arm save one. Again, really strong and really good. So I think you take Warlord Battalion and you take uh, two of the um, uh, narcotics in Mist Haven. So I think that's a strong combo. And then finally, getting down, we're not going to talk about the spell law because Mist Haven doesn't have a spell law. Um, it's a bit of an oversight, but whatever. The War Scroll spells are good enough on pretty much all of the um, casters in Cities of Sigmar anyway. Finally, the artifacts. So the Gloom Bell and the Shadow Silk Armor are fine. I think that if you want to use them, you can use them. Um, but the one that I would be choosing in 3rd edition, especially in the current... Um, Especially in the current Hero Hammer or God Hammer meta, uh, I think you take the Strangler Kelp Noose. And so what that allows you to do is that once per battle at the start of the combat phase, you pick one enemy model within three inches of the bearer and roll a dice. And basically if the dice roll is less than the target's wound characteristic, that target cannot attack in that, command for, in, in that combat phase. And so basically any of these hero models, you're always going to roll less than their wounds characteristic. And so Archeon, Gotrek, Nagash... Um, and the gash cares a little bit less because he's just trying to arcane bolt shit off the table. Um, but you know all those fighty characters, Marathi, um, or you, all of them, you can just drop the strangler kelp noose on um, with an assassin. I think is the way to do it. So the assassin jumps out at the start of the combat phase and then he throws the strangler kelp noose on him at the start of the combat phase. I think that's a really strong combo um, in the current meta, and I would highly recommend that anyone play it. So yeah, I think Mist Haven, um, they weren't that great in second, but I think in third they deserve a look in. So Harkuron are a great city. I think I think that everyone accepts that. Being able to take Daughters of Cain is strong. Uh, being able to take Marathi even more so is stronger. It's got um, a really good prayer that you can use, which is um, basically cast on a, th or sorry, um, achieved on a three and gives you units sixes to hit explode so when you've got units like dark shards in your army that you can put sixes to hit explode on them and you're shooting you know um 60 of them uh, 60 shots you're getting an extra 10 hits so you're basically negating it, it's the same as basically hitting on a two plus um so it's 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 really good and then when you can give them um the extra uh so they hit, they're hitting on a two plus any um sorry on a three plus because they have more than 10 models and then um you're giving them um the plus one to to hit from that effectively and so you're only going to miss one sixth of your attacks which is strong 
And the commandability is really good. Basically, it's a, an 18 inch bubble from the unit that you stab. So you stab a, a guy in a unit um, within 12 inches of a half year on hero. And then any models wholly within 18 inches of that unit um, get the get, uh, are immune to battle shock, essentially. So really strong. And you string them out and you cover basically the entire board with that single immune to battle shock effect. So I really like it. The command traits are interesting. Murderous Zeal, again, is the one that I was speaking about before. So basically you make your non uh, Doors of Cain priest unit a priest. Uh, you make your general a priest and he can cast the, um, or use the um, uh, incitement to murder prayer. So really strong. Bathe in Blood is also, I think, worth a look in. So add one to the general's wound characteristic and heal one wound allocated to the general. When you can put that on models that have um, a lot of wounds, so it's, it, it'd be better in a city where you could take, like previously you could put that on a cauldron and it was really good. Third edition you can't anymore, so I think that the value of that one's gone down. But being able to heal one every hero phase, especially if you've got an arc to save, can potentially be strong. And then Dark Adept, I don't think you bother with it anymore. I think you just take the Arcane Tome, if I'm speaking candidly. Um, yeah, but if you take a, a Daughters of Cain Priest in your army, uh, it is one of the only ways to get two prayers on a priest uh, in the game now. And so you could do one of their normal prayers, and then you could also do the um, Incitement to Murder prayer as well. So, you know, that Hag Queen on foot, or that Slaughter Queen, um, pretty good. And I've got a list uh, that I'm considering that's got a Slaughter Queen on Cauldron for that exact reason, because you can give six ups, uh, explode to Sisters of Slaughter, and you put vitriolic spray on stuff, and it's it's good. I think that's I think it's a strong ability. Um, the I think the Amulet of Destiny is the artifact that you're going to take as the first artifact, and I think you put it on a cauldron um, if you're taking a cauldron in a list, so that the, it gets a five up save. So strong. But the other option that I think that I was running in second edition, I think is still good is the Traitor's Banner. So minus one to hit uh, units that are wholly within 12 inches of the bearer uh, with range attacks. So um, really good. Basically just gives you extra survivability in a shooting meta. And there's a lot of shooting going around at the moment. Finally, the spell law. I've done a, a, a uh, rundown on um, how good this uh, well I've done a rundown on Harkin on as a city but the spell law itself is really strong you've got lots of really good options I think for redundancy you basically just put vitriolic spray on anyone that can take it and then don't really worry about the rest of it um, and, but I think that you know the withering is still really good plus one to wound a unit um, within 18 inches that's really strong uh, minus one to hit is always good and when you can stack them it's not as good as it used to be but when you can do sap strength and word of pain from a sorceress really strong again Again. Um, and then the shadow daggers as well is pretty good so it's just d6 mortal wounds or something within nine inches so all of those options are really strong and the the city itself is really good and i recommend that anybody that hasn't played hark you're on uh, there are some guys on the cities of sigma uh facebook group that have been kind of talking it down but i think i think they're absolutely mad i think hark you still one of the best cities that we have access to in the entire in in, in out of all 11 choices so Settler's Gain uh, it had a few little changes uh, made to it from um, second to third. I, I, again, think that it's probably one of the strongest cities. So all of your models that you coalition in, same as Harkuron, get the um, Cities of Sigma keyword. So not like Settler's Gain, uh, sorry, not like Tempest Eye or um, Living City. The Lumineth and the um, Dark Elves, uh, sorry, not Dark Elves, the Lumineth and the Daughters of Cain all get the Cities of Sigma keyword. So it's not overly relevant in Harkuron, but it is in Settler's Gain because um, you inevitably want to take a Hurricanum in Settler's Gain and you're going to give stuff plus one to hit with it because they get the Cities of Sigma keyword. So really good. You get an extra artifact just for doing nothing. So now that you have, previously it was a bit shit because you didn't have good artifacts, but when you can take a good universal artifact like the um, Amulet of Destiny or the Arcane Tome, really solid. So that in itself is probably really strong, but then you also get plus one to cast with, with all of your Collegiate Arcane Wizards. So when you've got, um, you know, you've, you've already got multiple pluses to cast like a Gur battle mage is a plus two to cast when he's standing next to a hurricane if he's casting in a spell he's plus three to cast if he's in settlers game he's plus four to cast that soul screen bridge so really good the ability to take um lumineth is good it's hard to look past 30 sentinels um with the 30 sentinels obviously you also need to take 10 wardens but um i, I 
yeah, I think that you take that and, you, and then you take the 30 Iron Drakes as well. I just think it's, I think it's a really good city. It gives you that kind of short range uh, Ren 2 punch, and then it also gives you the long range Mortal Wound um, ability. And in that list that I've got, I also took um, uh, the Warden, High Warden on the horse. And so basically he's got a, an immune to battle shock holly within 18 inches of him on a uh, using a command point. So again, I think that's really strong. It's just got lots of solid options now. Um, the command traits I don't really care about. There are some people that would disagree how I interpret the command traits, but I don't think you need to take the settlers gain ones um, before you take the universal ones just because of how that's actually worded in the book. And so that's how I'm interpreting this and how I'm talking about it. So I think that you can get rid of uh, any of the reference, any of the command traits uh, from the from the book, and you just go. I think you just take Master of Magic and just go re-roll to cast on one of your um, on one of your wizards, uh, which is really strong when you're you know plus four to cast and you roll. Oh no, I rolled that one and a three. I'm going to re-roll it into a, a four and a five, and then you got plus four to cast on top of that. So I think that that's a really. I think just think that's a really strong option, and I I like it quite a bit. The artifact wise, I still think the silver plated wand is the best artifact when you can take that and you can take the arcane tome, but and you've got two wizards, you don't even need cogs anymore. They're both casting um, two spells each. So I think that's, you know, solid option. I don't know if I'd take many of the others. I think my runner up would be just a blade of leaping bronze on a battle mage on Griffin just for shits and giggles um, to give him three attacks with his with his wand, which is not, it's not bad giving him three attacks. Um, but I still don't think there's much else that I would want to give it to. And then again, the uh, spell lore that you can take is actually fairly lackluster. I quite like Drain Magic into a, an enemy's magic list, and I think you just put it on a mobile unit if you can. You cast it as the last spell in your um, in your hero phase, and then any any enemy wizards within 12 inches are minus two to cast. So it's just it's strong. Um, well, it's not strong. It's okay. It, the, the range is what really limits it, and the resilience of your wizards that you can throw into their army is, is limited as well. Now, at the moment, Teclas can't actually take any of these lore spells, which is a bit of a, a bit of a shame. He's got good enough spells on his war on his war scroll again, especially now that Mystic Shield is better. Um, but I think that you, um, if you could um, take Teclas in the list, I think you would also um, you could put it on him because he can be quite resilient within himself. So. Yeah, all in all, I think Settlers Gain is a really strong city, and it gives you multiple potential builds that you can take to to optimize certain you know elements of of the um of the army, and just being able to take lots of artifacts and being able to take you know get multiple buffs on your Clechid Arcane Wizards, I think is really good. And then finally, Excelsis. So Excelsis, I think, is a little bit average. A lot of people like this plus one to hit mechanic per phase. That's not my favorite thing about the city. My favorite thing about the city is actually Repost, which is the command ability. So the command ability um, basically says that if you roll a six to wound, uh, sorry, a save of six plus, uh, sorry, a save of an unmodified six, that you do a mortal wound back to your opponent. When you've got a unit like Phoenix Guard that can, that have a four plus ward save, those abilities that trigger on save rolls are even stronger because you still save them on a six. Um, Sorry, even the ones that you fail, you get a four up after save, and so those guys come back to be able to take even more. It's just, it's really strong, basically. Uh, I quite like it, because the ones that you don't roll the sixes on, you know, you have a 50% chance of them not dying anyway, to come back and roll more sixes, basically. And then you can, especially these days when you got Rally, and when you can um, do Emerald Life Storm to bring things back, I think it's really good. But yeah, G Gift of Prophecy, I don't, really care about it it's because you can get you can get plus one attack all the time with all that attack now so it's it's utility goes down primarily because of that uh it, of course you can always get it um use it when you don't have a command point which is strong but the other thing is is that you can use it to potentially mitigate the minus one to hit with unleash hell so that's where i think that it's it's quite good uh if you're taking um you know sh units that you want to be standing and shooting with so getting onto the command traits for the generals, I think the Cunning Foe is the one that I would pick if they change the wording of the Anointed on Flame Spy Phoenix, basically because if he can retreat and charge, um, then he will be burning things when he retreats and charge. He can heal now, which is really, really strong, and on a 4-up he comes back after he dies. 
So I've never seen that happen, but I've never used him either. So I'm hoping that they change it because then I will be running an Excelsis list with the Flame Spire Phoenix, uh, with Phoenix Guard, and probably with Bundo because you want to take Gargan. So it's Excelsis. You want to face Gargan off against Gargan, and Bundo is a really good Gargan. So yeah, that's um I think that's really good. Um, otherwise, if if he doesn't get the wording doesn't get changed, then I don't think the, the Flame Spire Phoenix is worth it. I think you're taking the right place to pick D3 friendly units and set them up again. Really strong if you stack a, a flank, your opponent stacks the other one, um, you know, planning to avoid your big combat hitters, and you just put them back over that side again. It's only D3, so I wouldn't be putting two units out of place uh, more than any others. But, you know, something like Gotrek, you could, re you could reposition him as well. So I think that that's quite strong. Uh, artifacts of power wise, I think Glimmering's good. Everyone's seen the automatic 12 inch charge on Celestine Prime, which is good. And then if you do that, you know, you've got an artifact that can do that as well. That's also obviously pretty good. You need to have a strong melee model to be able to put it on though. And we don't have a whole lot of those in our army. And don't at me with like free guild generals and dreadlords on black dragons. They're not solid combat models in my opinion. Um, the one that I like though the best is the Griff Feather Charm um, because the minus one to hit and plus one to move is really good, especially you know on a Phoenix, which is minus one to hit already. Even if you're taking a, fl uh, a Frost Heart, minus one to hit and minus one to wound, just a baseline and a 17 inch move, really good. Um, so I'm Griff Feather Charm. Griff Feather Charm is probably my favorite out of those. And then the spells. The spells are very, very, very lackluster. Like you can, Cow is the one that potentially has the most uh, relevance in the current game. However, you need to roll two dice and get higher than that monster's bravery. Most monsters in the game are, you know, an eight plus, so you, the chance of you rolling it is extremely low. However, of course, if you um, did roll that, then your opponents can't make a, a charge move in the next turn, which is super strong. So if I was going to choose one, I'd be choosing Cower. Um, the other two, I think, are completely irrelevant. And so, yeah, take Cower and take it in redundancy. So Because there's going to be a lot of monsters in 3rd edition, um, and I think that that has you know, a unique answer to them. So that is all of the cities, or sorry, all of the strongholds of order in the Cities of Sigma Battle Tome and the supplement books covered. So thanks everyone for watching. If you have differing opinions to me, please post below or just at me um, on Twitter. I'm always up for a chat at Zweihanderhall, Z-W-E-I-H-A-N-D-E-R-H-A-L-L. And let's get some conversations happening because I love Age of Sigma 3rd edition and I love Cities of Sigma and I want to talk about it. Now, for the next few weeks, we're unfortunately in lockdown at the moment, which hopefully will end in about three days' time. I was meant to have a battle report up for you guys on Monday, and obviously it just didn't happen because of lockdown reasons. And then I've got a tournament in three weeks from this weekend, so hopefully everything goes back to normal. We get on top of our outbreak. We get to go to the tournament, so you can have tournament reports. But the other thing is, um, is that I'm going to be... Uh, doing a lot of Stormcast coverage because originally the intent with the channel was to do um, it's meant to be the Order Academy, not the Cities Academy. And I've got an, a Stormcast army being painted up specifically um, to play with the new book. Like, obviously, there's a lot of new models, but I've got my 15 Vindictors that I've been using in um, Hallow Heart, no, not Hallow Heart, Hammer Hall anyway. And I've got, you know, another 20 Sequiturs. I've got a lot of Evocators. I've got, I've got a lot of stuff that I'm hoping is going to be good in the new book and so I can do some review videos and I can do some battle reports on those guys and so hopefully that'll have some utility for you guys and yeah I'm excited for what's coming up in Age of Sigma and I think third edition is the best the game has ever been and so thanks all for watching I will speak to you all next week